We're splashed out. is going to cover all the operations following that final departure maneuver. It's going to include events like the trunk separation, closing of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, and then eventually as they get into the atmosphere, the deployment of the drogue and the main parachutes, and all of that ends with splashdown right off the Florida coast. At that point, teams from SpaceX will move in with their recovery ship, grab the capsule out of the water, and work to get Bob and Doug out of Dragon after a successful mission in space. So we are 26 minutes away from launch. Fueling a Falcon 9 is continuing. Let's check in one more time down with the team at Kennedy. Murray? All right. Thanks, Dan. We are so pumped right now because things have cleared up and it looks like we might actually do this today. If you're just joining us, we are now 25 minutes, 46 seconds and counting from the first launch of astronauts to the International Space Station from U.S. soil in nine years. This will mark the beginning of a new era where more people will be able to fly to space than ever before. And we want to share with you the results of a poll we asked a little earlier. If you could go to the moon, now it's not where the astronauts are going today, they're going to the space station, but if you could go to the moon, would you rather visit the South Pole, where no one has been before, or the Apollo 11 landing site? And it was a pretty even split. We had 46% of you say you would go to the moon's South Pole, and 54% of you would go to the Apollo 11 landing site. I kind of side with the Apollo 11 landing site because I'm a history buff, and I want to see where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot. So I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Lauren, which place would you go? I'd come with you on that one, and I would love to go see that flag there and mm -hmm. those footsteps, those footprints there still be there right there's no windows there, still be there. Yeah. <laughs> Lila, how about you? I, I think i'm with both of you because it's just like you know the meatball you know the classic yeah going to the classic spot and that's where all of it started that's where all that inspiration came even though i was an antenna engineer not seeing it but <laughs> besides that that's that's history and hopefully uh, maybe it wouldn't have to be one or the other that's true <laughs> exactly yeah i mean yeah we're going to learn more from going where we've never been before exactly. and so we need exactly. to go to the south pole too yeah. um and we are thrilled to see all of you following along online thank you for answering our poll and we're going to go over to tahira who's been monitoring all the action with uh less than 25 minutes to go to hear i'm sure things are heating up online Hey, Marie, I mean, you're completely right. Now that we have that go for launch, people are on the edge of their seat right now waiting on this historic moment to take flight. As you can see, photos are still coming in of just everyone around the country showing their excitement for this launch. And it's really been a touching thing to see how everyone's kept this excitement going from Wednesday's first attempt. So we just took a look at numbers, and we are now over 3 million people tuning in for this historic launch. And so for me personally, I just want to wish Bob and Doug the best of luck. This will be my own first time watching humans lift off to space from the United States, and it's just going to be a super emotional moment. For that, Marie, back to you at Kennedy for these last minutes before launch. All right, thanks, Tahira. And Leland, we got 23 minutes and some change to go. What do you think Bob and Doug are feeling right now? I think, you know, they're, I mean, they're very calm, cool, and collected as test pilots, but mm -hmm. I think they're thinking about what are the steps that I have to take if, if a malfunction or something happens. And so the nominal stuff is all kind of automated, but if something happens where they have to intervene with those touch screens, that's what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And we are, we're just inside 23 minutes now. So on Wednesday, we were five minutes further in the countdown when we heard that call to scrub. And we, the weather was still very touch and go at this right. point on Wednesday. But today, 
it, it, at least for right now, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> All eyes are on the system checks that are happening across the board, and we're listening in as we close in on launch. And I can tell you that things are looking very good. Chris Cassidy will be watching from the International Space Station right now, flying over the Pacific Ocean. It's heading to cross right over the launch pad. We might even get some good views from the station. I uh, hope to be capturing those. We'll have the launch view on the big screen up front, and everyone's excited to see our two crew members on their way to the International Space Station. But before we get to it, I just want to pass on good luck from the entire flight operations community here in Houston. It's always exciting to be doing something wholly new and history-making with station operations, and we can't wait to see our team members Bob and Doug in low Earth orbit and heading to the International Space Station. That's it from us here in Mission Control Houston. I'll send it back over to the team in Hawthorne for the latest happening there. John. T minus 20 minutes, 30 seconds. We're Strong continuing to count right. down. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon. 22 minutes, 45 seconds after the hour. Stage right now, on the right hand side, complete. you can see a large white cloud coming off of the Strongback. That is normal. As we get ready to load the second stage with liquid oxygen, we have to chill in the plumbing lines going up that strong back. And so as we relieve pressure, the moist, humid Florida air condenses around it, and that gives you the cloud. So that tells us that things are actually on schedule. We did begin propellant load at T-minus 35 minutes. Fuel loading on the second stage, I believe we just heard the call out that it is complete. First stage fuel load is continuing, and right now that's a little more than, uh, that's about 60% of the way full. So things are looking good. Second stage is getting ready to begin the liquid oxygen loading. After they finish chilling in the lines that you see on the monitor, they'll begin the load at T-minus 16 minutes and 30 seconds. The range right now is go, ready to support. Weather continues to be go. Now, as we inch our way closer, uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, we're waiting to uh, hear if anybody calls out an issue, but for the moment, as you can see on the screen, it looks good. Now, on the Dragon side, the Dragon Mission Director and the team there are reporting no issues. They've done their communications checkouts. The crew access arm, as you can see, is retracted away from the spacecraft. The crew is strapped in, and they are ready to go. Now final instructions will be going to the crew at T minus 10 minutes. The crew displays will be configured for launch and that setup will give astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley insight into how the launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health. We've already heard the crew give their go, close their visors and get ready for launch. For Dragon, it'll enter terminal count at T minus 5 minutes when it transitions to internal power. We'll hear continued call-outs on the countdown net as we get close to zero and to liftoff. But right now, at T-minus 18 minutes, 15 seconds, everything continues to be go for an on-time launch. So, Dan, Jesse, things are looking pretty good. How are they doing over at your stand? Things are great from about 15 feet away from you, John, and I, and honestly, things are looking pretty great down at the pad there. We're seeing a lot more blue in the sky. Green is the color we want when we're talking about weather, and that's where we're sitting right now. So we're continuing to count down. We are under 18 minutes away from liftoff. Again, it's an instantaneous liftoff um, at, uh, it's going to be 12.22 and 45 seconds here on the West Coast, 3.22 and 45 seconds over on the East Coast there in Florida. Just a reminder, it's going to be about a nine-minute ride up to orbit for the Falcon 9 and Bob and Doug on board Dragon. It'll be a two-stage flight, so we'll see the first stage fly until we hear Miko, or main engine, cut off about two and a half minutes into flight. After that, the second stage will take over and continue to power them the rest of the way. Second engine cutoff comes in just under nine minutes at about eight minutes and 44 seconds. Following that second stage completing its job, it'll continue to coast for about three minutes. It'll do a a slight attitude adjustment and null out any rate, so make sure it's not in any kind of a spin before they do separation. So that's when the Dragon spacecraft will physically separate from the Falcon 9 vehicle and Bob and Doug will be flying free. It's about a 19 hour ride if we launch today on time. So that means Bob and Doug will get on orbit. They'll have a number of burns or those firings of those Draco thrusters that they'll do over Stage two, several, 
we hear the locks, the liquid oxygen load has now started on stage two. Again, they're going to be doing a series of burns on the way uphill towards the International Space Station 5 spread out over the, the first 60 coming tomorrow in the afternoon. All right, now that we're under 16 minutes away, we have a special guest joining us. I'm going to toss it over to Jesse. We are T-minus 15 minutes and 45 seconds from liftoff of our second demonstration mission today, and we have the honor of having SpaceX's President and COO, Gwen Shotwell, join us. Thanks, Gwen, for coming out and taking a few minutes to chat with us. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> we know you've been on console. Um, how's the countdown been going so far in there? Countdown is clean today, just like it was Wednesday. Uh, we did clear the weather hurdles sooner mm -hmm. uh, than we did on Wednesday. And the only thing we're watching right now is downrange weather and lightning at the staging location. Of course. But we will clear that hurdle at uh, T minus seven minutes. Awesome. Great. Very exciting. Um, now I'm going to throw it back to 2012 because you were on console for Dragon when it was first making its way to the space station. How does that experience compare to today? So uh, I was nervous then. I stopped getting nervous for launches. Today I'm nervous again. <laughs> Super nervous. Stomach and throat. Understandable. Um, no, it's a fantastic fantastic day today. I'm really excited. The team is pulled together. It's such a professional operation. And when I say team, by the way, I mean SpaceX and NASA. This, uh, these folks have been working incredibly hard and have done an, a, a fantastic job. Yes, and we are all so excited. And we know that you have to get back into inside of Mission Control, but is there anything that you wanted to say before liftoff to NASA and SpaceX? Well, I want to thank NASA, of course, uh, for their, uh, their generosity and their help with getting to this place. I want to thank all the SpaceXers who have come together uh, to make this moment uh, in history. And uh, I want to thank Elon for hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> we thank Elon for hiring you as well. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you get back to Mission Control. Um, and good luck with launch today. Thanks, Jesse, and Godspeed, Bob and Doug. <laughs> well, we are so excited. We are just a few minutes away from countdown, so we are going to turn it over to Dan and John for the mi final minutes in terminal count. Uh, take it away, John. T minus 13 minutes, 30 seconds, continuing to count down. We are continuing to load fuel onto the first stage. That should finish up in uh, just about six minutes. Fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. That's closed out. And we are continuing to load liquid oxygen on both the first and second stage. The liquid oxygen load beginning on the second stage uh, just uh, about three and a half minutes ago. We are also loading cryogenic helium into the storage vessels on the first and second stage, getting in the last little bits of helium when we keep it uh, cryogenic, cold and liquefied. That gets us, uh, just like we do with liquid oxygen, the maximum amount into the storage volume so that we can get the most performance out of the vehicle. Right now we are in a fairly quiet state on the vehicle. Ground pumps continuing to put the propellant in to first and second stages. Next significant issue callouts that we're going to hear will probably be inside the T-10 minutes when uh, they talk to the crew. We'll listen for that. But at the moment, everything continuing to look good at T minus 12 minutes and 20 seconds. We're getting real close now, John. It's only a little over 12 minutes away. Just a reminder for everybody, it's about a nine minute ride uphill. We'll have some dueling boxes going on as that first stage is gonna be coming home while the second stage is carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So obviously we'll be keeping an eye on our astronauts the whole way uphill. Some of the calls that you'll be hearing, as there will be what we call performance calls over the Dragon to Ground the entire way uphill, and you'll just hear uh, some of the SpaceX engineers calling out uh, trajectories and booster uh, performance, so we're always looking for that word nominal. I know that's one of John's favorite words. That's one of mine, too. We want to hear nominal as much as possible up on the way uphill. You might also hear some number and letter combinations and those correspond to the different abort zones that Bob and Doug are in during their flight uphill. There's one A and one B. 
which signify that they're on the first stage. Those carry them from there in the Cape all the way up to about the very top of North Carolina. And then we'll have 2A through 2E or 2 Echo. And that will be on the second stage. And that goes from North Carolina all the way up to about the tip of Newfoundland. Uh, so in the northern Atlantic. And then there is a zone of the northern Atlantic that we're going to avoid. And so you should hear the call out be something similar to forward to Shannon. And that just refers to Shannon, Ireland, which uh, they'll be going off the coast of Ireland at the later stages of the uh, second stage if they have to abort. So just prepping you now for some of those calls. You're hopefully going to hear that word nominal a whole lot on the way uphill. Ten and a half minutes. Things are pretty quiet. As John I said, it'll pick up at right at about ten minutes. We'll wait for the crew just to confirm that they're displays are in order the crew is already strapped in and reported that they are go for launch and will continue to watch the fuel gauges tick up on the falcon 9 vehicle until fueling cuts off at just about two minutes prior to launch dragon and spacex confirmed displays are configured for launch spacex dragon displays are configured for launch copy bob doug on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you from orbit. Thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. The SpaceX core, so we're going to have voice that's going to be talking to Bob and Doug throughout their mission from right here in Hawthorne, just offering a few quick words. The activity is now going to switch over to Falcon 9. Our next major event comes at T-minus 7 minutes. We begin what we call engine chill. Pre-valves will open. Those currently separate propellants uh, on the first stage from getting down to the Merlin engines. We'll open the pre-valves, that allow fuel liquid oxygen to flow to the top of the pumps. And more importantly, when we open uh, the valves, that allow us to begin chilling the nine Merlin 1D turbo pumps on the first stage engine. It'll take a few minutes to get them cold enough to where they would then be ready to pass the large amounts of liquid oxygen through the pumps and into the main thrust chambers when we get to engine ignition at T minus two seconds. We don't want to try to run uh, highly chilled liquid oxygen through a warm pump. Uh, you would flash that into gas, and running gas right, through a high speed pump it. is not a good thing. So, right now, we are waiting for T minus seven minutes. That'll start the engine chill. Shortly after that, we will also get the fuel shutdown. listening to the SpaceX launch director in the background there. As I mentioned, at T-minus seven minutes as we start the chill, we will also get into the uh, final topping off of stage one fuel, and then the fuel load will complete. is now reclining away from the Falcon 9. And the igniter purges. I'll go bleed. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal count. Stage one, locks load, close out. Okay, we're at T minus two minutes, 42 seconds. Stage one, locks load is closed out. Stage two, we'll continue to load for about another half a minute or so. Once we get 
the completion of stage two locks loading, we have to vent down the line so you'll see another large white cloud coming off of the strong rack. That'll be normal. That'll happen around T minus one minute and 40 seconds. We're going on internal power now. Just a few seconds away from the stage two locks load being complete. It's been almost nine years since we've been in this position. A lot of work done by thousands of people to get to this point. All our eyes focus on two now. Stage two lock load is closed out. Propellant fills are complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two lock load complete. All fuel, all oxidizer on Falcon 9. One minute, 34 seconds to go till launch. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination system, has been armed. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T-minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bottom and tug. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And which of the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power to nominal. And one heat throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. And one heat drop up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through MASQ. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this. Until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is going to be the triple. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. And one D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines.
on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Falcon Slava. And back ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're going to continue under the power of this second stage. Stage propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at SECO, or second engine cut off, at about 8 minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over 5 minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good, though, getting good call outs, nominal propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. Equation signal Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectories, the Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda. That's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this space. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. Four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Bob and Doug flying at more than 5,600 miles Dragon per hour. SpaceX nominal trajectory. Already almost 200 miles down range from the Kennedy Space Center. Nominal trajectory continuing. While they continue uphill, it looks like we are getting a view of the first stage as well. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way back to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. And we're just about a minute, uh, a couple minutes away from the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin engines do ignite to help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the landing burn, which is just a single engine Dragon burn. SpaceX nominal trajectory. And you heard nominal starting to Is that call out? They are still on a nominal trajectory on Dragon. Still on second stage, and that's that M back engine on second stage on your left screen. And again, on your right screen is that first stage booster coming back towards our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. We're about a minute away from entry burn. Meanwhile, that second stage continuing to power Dragon into orbit. And if you keep an eye on that timer, that's going to continue to burn until 8 minutes and 44 seconds into flight. So a little over two minutes from now, we'll hear the call out Seco. It'll then be a little over a little over. A little over three minutes until Dragon physically separates from the second stage of the Falcon 9 after the upper Dragon stage gets SpaceX a chance. Dragon nominal trajectory. Dragon copy, nominal trajectory. Continuing to check in with Bob and Doug as they are on a nominal trajectory. Just about 10 seconds away from that first stage, starting that entry burn on your right screen. We should be able to see that view live. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is that entry burn beginning. 
This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage 2 FTS is saved. That entry burn continues. We're just about a minute away from Seco. We'll have a number of events all happen in rapid succession. The second engine cutoff. We'll be looking for that uh, stage one landing burn shortly after. Actually, just within a few seconds of each other. Such a cool view on your left screen, seeing Bob and Doug on Dragon. Right now you can see the displays that they are seeing right now themselves. Terminal guidance. And back all up. We are coming up 25 seconds or so away from Seco, or second engine cutoff. This is also the point where Bob and Doug are experiencing their highest G-force. We're seeing the counter tick up to right about 1.8. Bobby Shannon. You heard Shannon, so that just means they're in their final abort zones. If they were to abort at this point, they'd either be in abort to orbit or to land off the coast of Ireland. Standing by for second one 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 confirmation. And back to all step. And back shut down. Confirmation of Seco's second engine cutoff. Now we are waiting for our first stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbital insertion. Just confirmation nominal orbital insertion. Nominal orbital insertion. What you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone ship, where our first stage will be coming down. Looks like we lost that live view, but we'll wait for confirmation of that landing shortly here. Falcon 9 first stage is successfully landed. And there you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has landed. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit, so very exciting for us. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way to their targeted orbit. Come on, recovery one. So exciting today. <laughs> It doesn't stop. It does not stop. All right, we did We did hear again that call out, good orbital insertion, so that means Falcon 9 and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. Can we need an FRC on recovery one? And it's right at about 12 minutes when Dragon will separate. Looks like we saw a zero-G indicator floating around there. I know Bob and Doug owe us a little bit about what exactly that is that they brought up with them. <laughs> And before separation, before Dragon initiates separation from the second stage, they do make sure to make, they, they do ensure that the vehicle is not spinning and it is in good con condition before we separate. That's right, the upper stage does small attitude maneuver using some cold gas thrusters built into the rocket body itself. Exactly, so we do expect that separation to occur in about a minute from now, but they do wait until they have full confirmation that it is ready to separate. Such cool views. I cannot get over this view that we are seeing right now. Bob and Doug on the right screen, inside of Crew Dragon, out in space. Yeah, already 200 kilometers over planet Earth, or a little over 124 miles, traveling in excess of 2,700 meters. 27,000 meters per second, about 16,000 miles per hour. Again, we're just standing by. That separation event should be coming up shortly. Then they'll begin a series of checks on the Draco thrusters that are going to be used to maneuver and then power Dragon on its flight to the International Space Station. Standing by for separation. Expected loss of signal, walks. It sounds like we had an expected LOS loss of signal with one of the ground stations. Waiting for confirmation now of that. Dragon separation confirmed. Dragon separation confirmed. There is a great view right in front of you of Dragon separating. And there's that call out. 
Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. Dragon SpaceX, we've got a separation call. Uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. Standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks, Bob. Congratulations to you and the F9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9. And it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Gabriel, I'd like to be proud of you guys and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you so much for what you've uh, done for us today, putting America back into low Earth orbit up from the Florida coast. Gabriel, good luck. Godspeed. All right, so Bob and Doug are in and space. Ready, SpaceX, we've confirmed nominal equals activation and service section Draco checkouts. Uh, no scone deploys in progress. Gabriel, we're monitoring. The core here in Hawthorne giving the crew a heads up that we have confirmation the nose cone is deploying. So again, that nose cone is going to open up a little bit more than 90 degrees, goes up to about, I think, 105 degrees, and that's going to expose uh, the actual docking ring and the hatch that they're going to be going through once they attach to the International Space Station. And also four of those Draco thrusters, we call them the forward bulkhead thrusters, they're going to be used for these major phase burns or firings of those thrusters to actually raise their orbit gradually over the coming hours. Also heard good activation of the ECLIS, that's the Environmental Control and Life Support System. That's everything controlling their atmosphere, uh, just keeping Dragon a nice, safe, habitable environment where they're going to be living for the next 19 hours until they arrive at the space station. Right, exactly. And Falcon 9's job may be done for today, but the mission is not over. Crew Dragon's job is not done. As you can see, Bob and Doug are still inside Crew Dragon making their way. It will be a 19-hour trip to the International Space Station before they dock tomorrow morning. And such cool views. I love that we can get these live views here and see and watch what they're doing now that they are in orbit. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to just be looking over their shoulder. We'd be along for the ride. And we're going to be with them, and we're going to be with all of you the entire way uh, for their journey to the space station. We're going to be covering live throughout. Uh, Bob and Doug will obviously have a sleep period uh, where they'll get about eight hours of sleep a little bit later today before they wake up for all of their final approach. Uh, one of the major things we are looking forward to in the next couple of hours is going to be their first turn at the controls. So they're actually going to be using those touchscreen displays to take control and manually pilot Dragon. We'll walk you through what that's going to look like, and assuming we have some good ground station coverage, we'll be able to get views from right inside Dragon, looking over their shoulder as they manipulate the controls at the display. But, I mean, it, we had a, a smooth ride uphill, both stages of the Falcon 9 doing their job, placing Bob and Doug in orbit. I mean, this is this is a day, this is a historical day. This is us kicking off that new era of space flight that we've all been talking about and longing for since the space shuttle program came to an end in 2011. Yes. And the weather, the weather cooperated. Yes, second time's a charm. <laughs> right. All right, All right, so, so day, day for the history, history book, books. books. As, As you can see, we have lost some live signal there, there but the mission still, still continues, and, and we're going to send it over to KSC um, to continue uh, broadcasting uh, live with you. Lost signal in Newfoundland. Yeah, Jesse and Dan, we are just in awe over here, and I woke up this morning and looked at the weather forecast, I was like, Man, we're going to be back here on Sunday, but we we did it, yeah. and the room cleared out. Everybody was outside watching, and the and the inside, the lights were shaking, the cameras were shaking. Lauren came back in with tears in her eyes. Uh, this is really amazing. I, I I can't believe it. I saw it with my own eyes. This is I, I'm a little bit speechless. Um, just so grateful 
that we got them up there and there's a lot more to go a lot more to go but i'm so happy they're safe right now i'm just so happy yeah leland you were talking about it it's amazing what we can do when we work together yes american astronauts on american rocket from american soil showing you what americans can do when we come together as a team and blast doug and and bob off to the cosmos this is this is what it's all about and their families and everyone is working together to uh to take them up to space safely so i'm I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> that rocket fuel is still in my, in my veins, and uh, I want to go get on the rocket. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's, it's too late now. Maybe the next one. But we want to go over to uh, Daryl at Oak.